everyone. I remember when I started shooting and I first began to understand color temperature. It's something that we didn't give much thought to before we became visual artists, but once you know, you can't unsee it. It's like seeing the world in a whole new way. And the same is true for lighting ratios. Knowing lighting ratios is like seeing into the matrix. You can look at any scene, whether it's in movies or in real life, like at a dinner table, and know exactly what the light is doing all around you. When you understand and internalize this, you can begin to harness a much greater control of your images, both cinematically and photographically. So, Dale, you ask, how can I see into the matrix? Well, I'm so glad that you asked. With this, a light meter. Hold up, I can hear all the internet comments already. Light meters are relics, we have much better tools now, and no one has the time to walk around their sets taking readings, or just use your eyes and the monitor, all of which are true. But that still doesn't mean that you shouldn't own and use a light meter. All right, so to so stay with me here, we're gonna travel into the matrix. Before I show you what a bunch of different common ratios look like and how to meter for them, I first wanna to talk to you about how to calculate light ratios. You will find some people out there that express those ratios differently than what I'm about to tell you, and they will say, well, this is how I do it. Well, how they do it is wrong. It's like saying, well, I speak English by speaking German. We need to have a standard if we're all going to work together, and this is the standard. There are two numbers you need to be concerned with, your stop difference and your ratio. Remember, light values are logarithmic or exponential, which involves halving and doubling. Ratios, no different. So, if you want to tell your photo assistant or your gaffer, give me an eight to one fill ratio, they will know to make the fill three stops darker than the key. So why eight to one? for a three stop difference? Well, let's have a look at this simple chart. A stop difference represents a doubling or halving of light. So the ratio reflects this. A two to one ratio is half the light difference of a four to one. And you can see that for each stop difference, we are doubling our ratio number. There is a formula for this, which is take two to the power of your stop difference and you will have your ratio. However, I find it's easier just to memorize the numbers because I'm rarely working with more than a 32 to one or a five stop difference, at least on someone's face. There's also a way to calculate fractions of a stop, but I'll just put that at the end of the video with the other equations so we can just all move on. So the first thing that I wanna show you is actually how to take a reading. And on your light meter, you're gonna have a dome and the dome uh, can either retract like this one does or you're going to need to be able to shield it and cover it. But for measuring the key light, we don't want to shield or cover it. We actually want to factor in how the fill wraps around into the key. So I'm going to go up to where Paula is and I'm going to take a reading right by her face uh, with the dome facing the key light. And my reading I get is basically an F11. I've got 8.9. Um, and this is based off of 24 frames a second, 800 ISO, uh, 180 degree shutter. So it's telling me if I want to expose Paula's key to look as natural as possible, uh, we want to be shooting this at F11. Uh, when I look at her fill side, this is where I'm going to shield. So I'm going to retract my dome. If you don't have the ability to retract a dome, just cup it to cup all the other ambient light and the key light out of it. Um, and we're going to step over here and we're going to get a reading. I'm just going to cup it just in case. And I get effectively the same reading within a couple percentage points. Um, and what we're looking at right here when I move away is effectively a one to one. So this is uh, a one to one ratio. There's zero stop differences between Paula's light and dark side of her face. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to start lowering our fill light uh, by each stop so that you can see the difference between uh, each one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So here we are, I have reduced the light intensity on Paula's face by one stop on her fill side. I'm just gonna take a reading uh, just to confirm that. And we are indeed sitting at F8. And this is where some of the confusion comes in because if you're doing your bit of wonky math and not following the standard math, you still arrive at a two to one ratio uh, with a one stop difference. But uh, that should be what you're looking at for a one stop difference or a two to one light ratio. Let's go ahead and let's drop it by another stop and look at a four to one light ratio. Okay, so now I've dropped our light by two stops which is giving us a four to one light ratio. And I'm just gonna confirm that as well. And we are sitting at five, six. So that is two stops under our key, which is at F11. Let's go ahead and drop it another stop to show an eight to one ratio. All right, so here is our eight to one. This is now showing a fill 
It's gonna block out there at F4. So that is three stops below our key of F11, giving us an eight to one ratio. Now what I'm gonna do is we've effectively, next time I drop this by another stop, I'm going to be looking at a light that goes completely out, but still may not be dark enough uh, because of bounce and everything. So I'm gonna bring in some negative fill so that we can achieve our next one down, which is a 16 to one ratio or a four stop difference. So as it turns out, uh, I managed to not turn the light off. I got it down to one out of 100 data points on the light. Um, so uh, we still have a little bit of light coming out here and I'm just gonna get a reading and we're sitting exactly at 2.8. So that is four stops down from our key at F11, giving us a 16 to one light ratio. And let's go one step further and let's just show you what a 32 to one, a five stop difference is going to look like. Okay, so here we are finally with our 32 to one ratio. This is five stops difference from the key to the fill. If I take a reading here, we are getting a pretty even F2. Uh, again, five stop difference. So the story is not completely over yet because there's a few other things that we need to consider. And often in a scene, you don't just have a key light and a fill light, you also have ratios between a bunch of other things like a backer hair light, a kicker, or a background light. And so we also apply those ratios as well. We're going to keep her five to one ratio here and I'm going to place a hair light and I'm gonna to try to get the hair light on her in and around a stop below key. So at around F8, and with Paula, she has um, dark hair so that you can really blast the light onto dark hair and it'll absorb it. If you've got somebody with blonde hair or uh, perhaps somebody with no hair that has a bit of a sheen, you have to kind of temper that a bit. But I'm just gonna go back here and take a reading and I've got it at F11, so it's just that key. I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit. And we're at F8. So you'll be able to see now that we've got our our hair light to key looks pretty soft and graduated. It's not standing out, but it does provide some accent. Uh, and that's because we're keeping it within key. So now we're gonna move on to the background. And typically with backgrounds in high key lighting scenarios, we want the background to be about a stop under key. Um, and that's not necessarily achieved by using the incident meter. That's achieved by actually looking at the eyepiece. And this is where false color actually is a really great help because you can just see from the camera's perspective. Um, so on the false color, you'll be able to see that as well, but I can just look through this eyepiece and it's the reflective nature. We want that reflective nature to be a stop down. So I'm gonna look and right now we're sitting at F4, which is um, three stops under key. So what I wanna do is I wanna bring that up a bit, um, but not too bright. If we get it equal to key, what's likely going to happen is we're gonna to be too close to the skin tone and she's just gonna meld into the background. So we wanna bring some elevation up in the light, but not too much. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna turn on some lights. The best thing to do is to do your spot metering next to camera. So I'm going to go next to the camera here and F8 and we're looking good. That's one stop under. So this is sort of your classic lighting example of 32 to one with the key to fill ratio while maintaining a two to one background to key and a two to one hair light to key. So that's it, it's pretty simple. You're gonna get used to seeing what the difference is between all of these light ratios once you start employing them a lot more. So you'll see just by eye often what the difference is between a two to one and a 32 to one and that type of thing. But you'll also be empowered to be able to communicate with your team to say, hey, what I'm looking for in the backlight is a two to one. I'm looking for a background that is 16 to one. You'll be able to know what that's going to look like and how to apply it in all sorts of different environments. And that's about it. So thank you so much for watching. As always, subscribe and like this video and comment. We'd love to hear your comments uh, about this video and many of our other ones. And uh, find us on social media. We're there as well. Until next time, thanks so much for watching and happy shooting.